hey there, how you doing? Another Wednesday, another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything, because it is 6 p.m. Pacific, and here we are on Facebook Live. Um, got a couple things I want to remind you of, that this happens every Wednesday, but not next Wednesday, because I will be on my way to VO Atlanta. And I'm sure if you want to go, you probably still can, although it's getting rather late. Uh, but VO Atlanta, this is going to be the last one uh, with Gerald Griffith at the helm. And um, he has just done an amazing job with VO Atlanta. It is one of the best conferences for voiceover. And I dare say probably in any industry. Uh, and if you are going to be somebody that is there, the people who are there like myself that are doing X sessions and sitting on panels, we want to talk to you. Don't be shy. Come up and say hello. Ask the questions you want to ask. And uh, I'm going to tell you this, too. Get my card. You can give me your card, but get my card because chances are I'm not just going to get in touch with you out of the blue after a five-minute uh, conversation. But if you want to get in touch with me, you'll have my info. Uh, these Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings uh, live on my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. And if you'd like some Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training, you can go to the website, uh, DaveFenoy.com, click on the Study VO tab at the top, and once again, uh, just because I can, there it is, VO Atlanta VoiceOver Conference, and uh, that's happening next Thursday. I'll be flying on Wednesday. Next Thursday uh, through Sunday the 3rd, and it is going to be wonderful. And speaking of VO Atlanta, uh, my guest is going to be at VO Atlanta, and so let's all give a warm welcome to Mr. Uncle Roy B. Yokelson. There he is. Yeah, you might want to Good center night. yourself on your camera just a little bit there, Roy. How you doing? Shouldn't... Great. Shouldn't this be called Ask Uncle Roy any anything? Do we agree? <laughs> Out of the show? You know, I, I knew there was a reason I haven't had you on in, in, in so long. I, I, I just forgot what it was. And here you're already starting. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I, to tell you the truth, there's going to be a lot of Ask Uncle Roy today. Uh, and for okay. those, those of you who don't know, uh, Roy B. Yokelson has been a fixture uh, and friend of the voiceover industry for about 45 years. Uh, tell us how you got started. You were uh, recording people in the studios in New York City, right? I was, but but I really got my start when I was a kid, and my father gave me tape recorder, and we had the puppet stage in the basement. We didn't know, but we pre-recorded the left dialogue. We didn't know that's the way you do it, but it seemed like a good idea. And, you know, I guess I was 10 years old and we put on shows for the neighborhood and everything. And I still have those tapes because I have everything I ever recorded. Wow. <laughs> uh, all the way back then. Um, I just always had audio as a passion. How can I make audio better? How can I play with sound? That was my toy. You know, uh, I didn't have a guitar like you did and play, play instruments and sing or anything like that. Um, and then, yes, after after high school, I went to trade school for two years because no, there was no career guidance. There was no Institute of Audio Research. There was no full sale. None of those things existed. So how do you learn how to be a director or a recording engineer or producer? How do you learn that? There's, there were no schools, so I became uh, an intern, or I guess I became a messenger uh, at National Recording Studios. You were the guy that went and got coffee. I got coffee, I swept up, I set up microphones. No, but the first day, and I dressed up because I thought I was an assistant engineer. And the guy said, here, take this package to Madison and 54th. I said, what are you talking about? They said, you're a messenger, go. So I got burned on the first day, uh, not realizing what the job really was. But it was, it was fine. Uh, I really learned from the ground up. So I thought, all right, I'll be the best messenger they ever had. Then I was the best at a chipping they ever had. Then I was the best assistant engineer. And thank God my mentor saw that I'd be good at this. I was just passionate about it. If you don't have passion, Dave, what have you got? You, 
what do you got? You know, okay, you could have talent, but you really need the passion to want to keep doing this or keeping stuff. So he had me trained that he could walk in five minutes before a giant music session and that he could just sit down and hit the record button. I had everything all set. So um, we were doing jingle sessions, uh, two jingle sessions a day, four or five days a week. But this is back when I was the engineer on the original Transformers and My Little Pony and G.I. Joe in 1980s, you know. Wow. It was that. I used to be somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, uh, you you are still somebody, but so you're you're working in these studios and uh, you're doing things like you're you're not only recording but you're directing. Um, when did you start helping people outside of the studio on your own uh, as an advisor, uh, making demos, that kind of thing? Yeah. So when I was still on staff and then eventually freelance, uh, I worked, I, I just wanted to help the voiceover people get through the session with the least amount of bull, bullshit and, and over directing from the client. The client thought, oh, we got to get all oh, these, these voiceover people, we got to get them out of here. And the voiceover people knew that I was on their side. So by watching so many advertising sessions go down with bad direction eventually i got to be a good director and the client realized that i could communicate better with the talent and and get right to it uh rather than long-winded direction and stuff so so i learned while i was still in the studio and then eventually it was just time to not i was uh, so i was the studio's in-house uh freelance a producer engineer but i was paying for studio time ah it was time so you yeah, got and your and clients it. and you brought them to the studios right so i you know <laughs> studio would charge me i would char charge my client including my markup but why am i paying 250 an hour or why is a client paying 250 an hour when you know just like these days everybody's at home that nobody pays for studio time and it's a shame that when home studios first came out, when the first guy got ISDN, um, I said to him, are you going to stick on a studio fee, right? You have to recoup your ISDN fees and everything. He said, no, that's all right. You know, uh, now had that been set up early, uh, we all would have been making a little extra money because, you know, I, I, I think this is that kind of business that if money weren't a thing, we'd all be doing it for free. Uh, and it's also a competitive business. So I think a lot of times people are trying to get a little edge and gee, uh, if I'm doing promos, I'm going to make that 225 plus 10. Uh, and I've got 10 promos to do plus a bunch of tags. That's enough money. I'll throw in the studio for free. Uh, no one saw down the line that it wouldn't just be uh, promo guys uh, that are doing work out of their homes because up until this pandemic, uh, a lot of clients, uh, commercial and uh, narration, uh, even though it was going on uh, from home studios, uh, a lot of clients wanted you in a studio. If you were in L.A., we want to get you in here. Um, but that has changed. Now, we're going back to the studios, but not nearly as much. People are testing your home studio and trying to make sure that it's got the sound you want. I've, I've got a whole other set of gear in here now. Uh, PCB is a company. I'm doing some game work for them. And they created uh, about a dozen uh, travel kits that wow. they bring into, they deliver, excuse me, and set up for you. So I've got a, a 103 and a, a laptop and uh, an Apogee, uh, and it I had to plug it into my Ethernet for my computer. And uh, now on my screen, I get uh, a, a Zoom and the script, but I had to drag their microphone, and they've got a, some stuff on it. I had to drag their microphone and whatnot into my booth. Couldn't use my microphone. 
uh, couldn't go through my equipment. Uh, and, and they don't care. They're, they're doing this for everybody. Uh, but uh, uh, that, and what, that, what, what microphone couldn't they use? Your 87? Uh, well, I got an 87. I've, I got a collection. I got a mic locker. Right. And I've got the yeah. same microphone uh, that they're using. But right. um, we're not going to be going back to studios the same way we were. And uh, that's a, one of the reasons that I got you on here, Uncle Roy. Uh, because you've been helping people put together studios, get their sound right, uh, make demos. And I'm just going to say right now, if you've got questions about uh, home studios, uh, your sound, making demos, uh, you know, this would be a good time to uh, type in that question and uh, we can get Uncle Roy to uh, pontificate on uh, audio sound I, I and microphones and whatnot. I love helping people get their home studio right. And I've been using Adobe Audition since it was cool at 96. And I get, cause I was just a recording engineer that needed to do digital at home. And I came up with my own workflow of, um, that I finally got, I'm coining up here cause there's, there's a word document up there. Uh, I finally got it on paper and this is the way I teach it. I, I just thought, how can I make it go faster? How can I make everybody at home have broadcast quality uh, with whatever microphone they have? Now, you what? Know, let me let me ask you this. Uh, I know you do a course on uh, aud not audacity. Um, well, well, I do that too, but but primarily Adobe Audition. Okay, Adobe do Audition. Adobe. Do you work with Pro uh, Tools? Do you work with Twisted Wave? I know Pro Tools because I had to learn it. Back in the day, I was using uh, a very early digital system called SSL Screen Sound, which was a wireless pen and a tablet, and it cost $100,000, and it didn't do as much as free Audacity can do today, because <laughs> the technology wasn't there. You know, they, it was uh, digital was in its infancy. Oh. So I, I, I do, I set up Adobe Audition or Twisted Wave or Audacity uh, with a lot of intuitive keyboard shortcuts and I adjust all your settings and I advise you what plugins to buy and what equipment to have. And the, the shortcomings are some people just don't have the budget. So yeah. I have to work with whatever they have. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say it's not as expensive now. I was having a conversation with a student of mine earlier today and they were asking about upgrading their equipment and and frankly I told them they weren't ready yet because they weren't working yet uh, they had an audio technica what, 2040 or 2020 yeah. or 2040 uh, yeah. decent microphone uh, they had a focus right uh, 2i2 Scroll. I believe yeah. uh, decent interface now no plugins no preamp. Uh, but that's enough to start with. And they I could see them in a room that's pretty well treated. But let me ask you that. What are the mistakes most people make uh, when they start out in voiceover, technically? They're, they, they're a little delusional as to how <laughs> much... <laughs> they're very delusional. How much money does it take? And you're right. If you have 400 bucks, you can get a decent microphone and interface. So it's not a lot of money. But if, if all they have is $100 and they want to get a, a, a USB mic, I can't, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. They didn't get to me soon enough. So it's a combination of unrealistic uh, financial investment and time. Oh, I need a return on investment right away. Or... Oh, I'm retiring now, uh, so I just want to do this as a hobby. And I'm treating it very seriously, but they just want a hobby business, and they don't take what I'm trying to show them as seriously because it's just a hobby, you know. You know, I, I've uh, I've had that conversation when I was uh, stepping away from radio. Uh, I, I, my first two years in L.A., I, I, I still spent some time on the radio, 1990, 91, uh, and a little bit into 92. And one of my colleagues knew I was doing voiceover, and at that time I was 
doing promos for ABC and CBS and um, commercials and some cartoons and whatnot. And uh, at the end of each year, while I was still working, uh, she said, well, you know, it's, it's August now. Listen, can you help me get my... Uh, uh, voiceover together, uh, some kind of little demo, so I can get all that Christmas work. I would have <laughs> others that would say things like, "Yeah, you know, it's like you're saying. I just want to do it as a hobby. You know, I, I don't want to make it my main thing." But you really, really have to attack this like it's the one thing you are going to do. I had this one guy who is retired. Nice guy, decent enough voice. He's fine with his USB mic and a hobby. And he produces these videos for his antique car shows. But he, he doesn't, ch he charges like a hundred bucks oh. for a 20 minute, for a 20, including finding music, mixing it, uh, voicing the whole, writing the script, voicing it. And it, it just makes us look bad uh, because we're making money that you would expect and I keep telling them look you got why don't you raise your rates oh I don't need the money don't you hate people <laughs> who say oh I don't need the money well you know okay we all need the money you got to put it away you know wow that's so. amazing I've got a, a hello here and a comment from Everett Oliver <laughs> see Everett well, I mentioned your name and people laugh uh, Uncle Roy helps with editing your audition sounds such as background noise, pops, clicks, etc. Also, Uncle Roy needs to get back to work. I need him. LOL. I'm joking uh, for right now. Everett calls me uh, three times a week. I, you know, I always look forward to his call, although last time he called me, he woke me up from one of my famous naps. You know, and he I, said, oh, I had, uh, Monique and I had dinner with Everett uh, a couple uh, weeks ago. Uh, we were just say hey, let's take a day and go down to Long Beach and drive around and uh, you know buy some tennis shoes or something and we did I said ah, Everett lives down here let me give him a call and so uh, he answered the phone hello and I hey Everett it's Dave Fenoy mm-hmm and <laughs> Ev hey, um you know Mo and I are in town I thought you know I might take you yeah. to dinner and and I, slowly he warmed up. He says, oh, I was resting. Uh, but uh, once we got him out of the house and to dinner, he was uh, a, a fine human being. But I always thought, what did I do to Everett that he's pissed off at me? But he wasn't. I, one of my claims to fame with Everett is when he was here, he stayed here for a couple of days. And I, I like to watch Perry Mason at 1130 at night on me TV. So oh, you're I made, it, I made him age. watch... Uh, yeah, well, we're probably around the same age, you and I. I don't, well, don't, don't let the gray hair fool you. No, I'm okay, only 36. You're, you're younger than me. I'm 30. <laughs> I'm 39. I'm like uh, Jack Benny, and the kids are saying, who's Jack who's Benny? Who's Jack Benny? <laughs> so, so Everett and I watched Perry Mason. And uh, during one of the conferences, one of the questions were, uh, was, what do you, if, if, if you catch a show in the middle, what do you have to what is it that you have to watch to the end and he said perry mason so i felt oh wow i made i made an impression on him because you know sooner or later that uh the murderer is going to confess on the stand anyway uh maurice a scott uh and uh he's you should take oh, his yes. life changing course his editing process changed my life what's the mistake that most of us are making while we're editing uh, that is life changing. Well, my course is life changing, uh, but um, spending too much time cleaning up or re recording, re recording, re recording. Oh, I heard I made a click. I have to re record. No, we fixed the click. We edited it out or we put auto heal on it. And if you're on Adobe Audition, um, people wear headphones too, uh, to too record. much. To record and then it's so funny Dave because I I, I do like this um, you know if you're wearing headphones and you're too close to the mic and you sound like Dave Fenoy <laughs> and I, I, so that's my tiny imitation that I do of you and I say your name <laughs> to everybody um, 
try not try recording without headphones. It, you need them for punch and roll. You need them for Source Connect, and you need them for cleaning up your your uh, your mouth clicks and stuff like that. But don't listen to yourself in headphones. If your headphones are too soft, you're going to project too much. If they're too loud, you're going to hold back. Somebody sent me a file. I said, "What are you yelling at me for?" He said, "Well, I couldn't hear myself in the headphones." Uh, well, yeah, and you know, it's it's interesting uh, because I came out of radio and into voiceover. I wore headphones all the time, and uh, one of the things I learned is just what you're saying: take the headphones off. Uh, as a former radio guy, um, I had the habit of being this guy, and uh, you know, you're 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 pushing it out there. You're making sure everybody understands every word you're saying and, and you're selling it and you're pushing it and you're making the words so beautiful. Not exactly and, conversational. Not conversational. <laughs> and you've got those headphones on and you begin to fall in love with your voice. Exactly. And the worst thing you can do is fall in love with your voice. Um, it's, it's that thing that happens. Uh, people come up to me, you know, uh, People tell me I have a great voice and I should do voiceover. <laughs> and I'm like, well, maybe, can you act? Can you right. act? That's what can you question. do with your voice? What can you do with it? Right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, also, people, if, especially I'll, if I'll bring it back up in a minute. Finish if, Especially if, if they have headphones on and they like to get into the microphone and they fall in love with their voice. But there's, I had a ad agency, uh, the head of the ad agency came in and he was listening with his eyes. Everything was going along fine and he stopped a perfectly good take and he said, you're not eating the mic. I said, no, he's too close to the mic. It, it sounds terrible. That's a that's not a good excuse. I want him to eat the mic. We don't eat the mic anymore. <laughs> Maybe in radio you eat the mic. One of, one of my pet peeves about uh, doing commercials in studios is yeah. when they send uh, the junior executive to direct uh, <laughs> who doesn't know what he's doing and uh, you're in to take 5 and 10 and 25 and 30. You're on uh, a fishing expedition. And uh, guys like you, the engineers, have saved mine and many other voiceover butts uh, by, hey, you know, uh, you ought to go back and listen to take three. I think he, I think he had it there. <laughs> Um, yep. But worse, now, of course, you get the take that they want. Now they want to mix it while you wait uh, and then call the guy on the golf course that couldn't be bothered to come in and approve. Right. <sighs> but, uh, you know, small, yeah. small and then, problems. Um, my wife doesn't like the way you said uh, such and such uh, word. Can, you, can we do it again? I had somebody tell me their kid didn't like something one time that their kid anyway uh tina smith recommendations for mid price range i can't afford the neumann 103 or the mm -hmm. sennheiser shotgun yet uh mm -hmm. any suggestions for something in the three to five hundred dollar range to keep me rolling until i can afford the big guns right um we have the road nt1 for around 370 not the 1a uh, thank not you not the one A. It's too bright and too sibilant. Sweetwater will try and sell you the one A because the one is out of stock. Well, then go buy it on Amazon, you know, or broadcast supply warehouse or something. Some place. Road NT. Road NT one A and a Steinberg UR twelve or whatever interface uh, floats your boat. Uh, the CAD C A D E one hundred S as a good mic. I even like the MXL CR89. Um, now, one step up from that... And, and, and those, those David, mics are all in the... Uh, they're, 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 even, uh, they're all under 300, believe it okay. or not. Um, the CAD might be more. The CAD list price of the CAD might have been 500, but you can find it for 350. Uh, but Dave and I agree on the following microphone, uh, Neumann TLM 102 nice instead of mic. 103. It, we call it a baby 87, Dave and I. Um, I have one. You can find it. If you can find it for new for 800 with the shock mount, 
if you, you could squeak up from your 500 uh i think list price is 700 uh you could buy one slightly used or an open box uh that's that's the next step up from that and then you can go to the 416 and the 416 it's been described as an in-your-face microphone. So it's great for promo and gaming and all, uh, at, and commercial. I don't, I prefer it not on long format because it's in my face for too long, especially people tend to work it a little too close. Uh, it has a tighter pattern, so you can't drift too far out is a height what they call hypercardioid it's very directional which is good for keeping outside sound out but you if you move a lot if you do a lot of physicality in your acting you gotta stay within the sweet spot of that microphone you know uh how that became a voiceover mic don't you go ahead tell uh, us dave there was a promo guy named ernie anderson back in the day uh, oh, yeah. Ernie, uh, when I was growing up in Cleveland, he uh, uh, was the voice of Channel 5, uh, and he moved to L.A. to become the voice of ABC, and he was the voice of Ford. He was the first million-dollar voice. But uh, when he was doing promos for ABC, he didn't want to be in a booth by himself. I want to be in the room with the guys. But uh, the machine room where the tapes are rolling and the guys are, um, it was kind of noisy. So somebody suggested using uh, the, the 416, shotgun. the shotgun mic, right. uh, because it rejected noise coming from the sides. And he started using that, and before you knew it, uh, other television stations were using it, and then the studios were using it, and uh, it has been named the, uh, the L.A. voiceover mic. And when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. What was it designed for? It was designed for vocals. It was designed for being on a set, on a TV show, on a movie, getting the dialogue from actors. Right, right. It was, and it was probably a 415 was the predecessor to the 416. And it didn't use 48 volts for phantom power. It had a different uh, power supply, but basically the same, same uh, polar pattern, the same, uh, sound okay uh yeah. wait a minute i got another little comment here for you jeremy adams just took roy's life-changing course myself finally ordered brand new mic per his suggestion looking forward to getting it do you do you know what he ordered well he well it's either going to be road nt1 or possibly the 102 anybody i've recommended the 102 everybody is happy with it yeah, yeah. uh i can't imagine <coughs> not not being happy it, it really has great. become my uh travel mic and I, I, used to, I used to use the little Apogee, which can go right into whatever. Uh, and it's And it's still a great little mic, but um, I can carry with me a, a, a Focusrite 2i2, uh, that mic, uh, a Chaotica eyeball, and no matter what hotel room I'm in, uh, it works just fine. I produced a video about how to fix your Chaotica eyeball. Many people say, I know how to fix it. I threw it in the fireplace. <laughs> uh, it it has to be, I'll, I'll sh Dave, after the show, I will show you. I hold, promised. Hold on, what? I, hold on, keep talking. Yeah, I promised I made a video how to fix your Chaotica eyeball and your or your porta booth that Harlan Hogan sells. Um, I told Harlan I have a I have a modification for there. There's your eyeball. Don't make me get mine. It's up there. So how, how uh, do I how do I fix this? Let's just do a little. I'll give I'll, I'll give you the quick, but I'll show you the video later. It's very funny. But I'm not allowed. To, I promised Harlan I wouldn't no. show it because because I said that uh, his uh, his product makes us sound funny. Um, when you put your mic in there, what you put in yeah, through this open it up. Here. Yeah, you put put the mic in there and then fill up all the space around the microphone with washcloths and stuffed animals and just fill that space so there's no space, just the mic and the padding because you're putting a microphone in a little room and it get it it takes on a room sound. The only mic that sounds good in there is the Apogee. <laughs> 
but everything else it sounds it sounds boomy because your voice goes in that eyeball and bounces around but if you put enough padding uh around it it there's no more room and it's interesting you said towel because towels are one of the best sound absorbing materials on the planet uh, right. i saw a study not so long ago uh, that uh, did a scientific test uh, to see what absorbed the most sound and four or five towels together absorbed more sound than foam or rock wool which i thought was kind of amazing yeah yeah so the, i um just fill it up and then i even say put fiber fill which is the stuff that's inside your pillows just stuff some of that in there too uh, fiber fill was optional in the video I produced. I have to show you that later. Um, that'll really, if you, if you're in a hotel room, you can either make a pillow fort, or some people take the ironing board and put a blanket over it, because those hotel rooms are notorious. I used to take the, the little folding uh, 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 stand for uh, suitcases and whatnot. And put up right. on the desk and 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 do it that way. But I have once or twice had to use the ironing board. Yeah, and the back, four sixteen, and and, <laughs> and the four sixteen is very is much better in a hotel room because again, the elevators are going. And at in Atlanta, depending on which side of the hotel you're on, you're facing the airport. Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> I, uh, yep. Let's see, I got another comment here, Gary Scales. What's a good distance from a microphone for sounding conversational? That is a very good question, Gary. Uh, well, typically we say pinky to thumb. Well, here, here's the thing. It's well, not what if only you've got the small hands or extra big hands? <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. More important than the distance or in combination of the distance, the mic has to be over to the side at at least a 30 to 45 degree angle and you don't talk into it. Don't turn to it, don't play to it, don't talk into it because that's your plosives and your mic proximity. It's a nasty sound. When I'm talking, my plosives go this way. The microphone, let the microphone find you, you know? So uh, pinky to thumb, but off to the side. That's there you go. my answer. Uh, right now, the microphone I'm using, and I will buy microphones. For, this is uh, this Sanko uh, shotgun mic. It's a knockoff of the the uh, four sixteen. Four sixteen. I uh, accept. This is I think it was like two hundred and fifty bucks, maybe three. Wow. Uh, and it's a pretty good mic. And I am, oh, uh, well, there it is. So I'm okay. even further away than that. And. and and, and you're have, not in your you're not in your booth. You're in an open room. I'm in an open room. Does it, it sound? Sounds, does the room sound good? Well, only because I hear for a living. But it sounds it sounds pretty good. Well, and I tell you why because I have rock wool uh, on the screens behind me, and there's some uh, I've got some acoustic foam up there, and on my back wall there, it's yeah. filled with stuff. Um, sometimes it's not that you need to have uh, something that absorbs, but something that bounces the sound in crazy directions uh, so it doesn't bounce back to the microphone. It's the wall of washcloths that, that does it. <laughs> I, think, so, I think that's it. Um, yeah, as much, as much sound absorbing material as... You, the ceiling is not your friend. The people no. uh, do a walk-in closet and they forget and they send me audio. I'll, I evaluate everybody's audio for free. Send me your audio. Uh, but the ceiling, your voice, and you don't think about it, your voice bounces on the ceiling and comes back into the microphone and sa it sounds boomy. Yeah, I, oh, uh, let's see. Uh, someone's paranoid, Randy Morrison. <laughs> Eating the mic, talking to me, aren't you? Asking for a friend. <laughs> hey, we were talking about you before, Randy. Yes, we, yes, we had a nice conversation. Because we, <laughs> we love you. We love you. <laughs> Randy's going to be here at the barbecue, which we'll talk about later. Um, Randy was a big help uh, to me. And Randy is the, uh, I'll say, CEO of, Connect of uh, Connection, Connection Open. Connection Open. Yeah. Which is a re really good, it's the new standard 
we don't need Source Connect. We need Connection Open, right? Yeah, that, well, they're, they're using it overseas. It's doing mm-hmm. very well overseas. It's, it's having a little uh, harder time uh, getting a foothold here. But, Andy uh, Danish uses it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's trying. He's trying to get it out there. Uh-oh, and uh, we're just going to let this little back and forth. Oh, Grace Newt, oh, my God. Hi, Randy Morrison. <laughs> Expect a call from me soon. I oh, don't there you go. know what's going on there, but if we can be matchmakers, uh, that works too. Uh, no, Grace, Grace, Grace met Randy at the barbecue, and uh, it's funny because Grace put in the little uh, in the little promo that I put up that you made, and I put it on my uh, Facebook. She said, "Oh, I'm here," thinking that was the link to the show. So I'm glad, Grace. I'm glad you got in. You found the real uh, link. Well, there you here, go. Here we are. Got here another are. question here. Theodore Mezzacapo, question for Uncle Roy. I have a Rode NT1 and an mm-hmm. Audient ID4 uh, with a Monagi, uh, Magami Gold cable. They're all connected mm-hmm. properly with the gain up fairly high, and yet the audio is low with a lot of interference hiss. Any idea of a fix? Do you have... Did you add any extension to your USB cable from the audience to the computer? Because uh, it doesn't like a long USB. If you added an extension or you added a longer USB cable, that's gonna be the source of, uh, of the interference, of the crackling, static. Also don't make sure your cell phone is nowhere near because that'll cause static too. Yes, I think all the interface company need, companies need to give us a little more gain because I tell everybody you got to run your gain like at three o'clock on your on your uh, Scarlett or Steinberg, and there's not a lot more room uh, if you, especially if you're soft spoken. Now the other possible fix is in your Zoom settings. If you go into the zoom settings to the right of the mute button, there's a little up arrow. You go to audio settings, uncheck where it says automatically adjust microphone volume, uncheck that. And if you're on a PC, turn that input level all the way up. Uh, You might also have to go into your control panel and look at the settings in there. There's also volume settings in there. Also Skype will do that. If Skype has automatic gain control, if you're loud, it it busts down the input gain and it stays there. What about if uh, he hasn't bothered to turn on the the forty eight? That's the power. <laughs> no, then you'll get nothing. <laughs> okay, so you know what? It's been so long. I I remember early in my career, I had that. But well, how come my mic is nothing? And, oh, right, I can't hear button, anything. Turn on your the button. Turn on yeah. your phantom power. Yeah, exactly. So it's not a problem with the phantom power because it'd be something or nothing. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't hear anything. Could also be that the mic is getting older, or the interface is getting older, or if you're on a PC, if uh, Windows has done any kind of soft software update, sometimes it corrupts the drivers especially on Scarlet focus rights. So you have to go to the focus right website, download new drivers, uh, install them. And usually that clears up, uh, other staticky kinds of problems. Let's see. We've got a returning comment. Yes. That's how I use my chaotic eyeball. I have wash clothes in mine. <laughs> wash gloves. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I probably smells like dirty socks and underwear. Um, right. Maybe he saw my video because I, I only show it privately. I promised Harlan because I said, you know, that the porta porta booths makes it sound funny. And George Whittem said, you punched Harlan's baby in the face. So I wrote to Harlan. I said, listen, I love your product, but I have a fix for it. You know, so I said, I won't. I won't show it. I won't show it. Don't Got worry. another comment. J Horse Black yeah. question. Uh, hey, Roy, good to see you. Is the 102 kinder to small spaces than the 103? That's a good question. I don't know if I have an exact answer. I I, I describe the 103, it's not my favorite mic, but if you sound great on it, then it's your favorite mic. Uh, I find the 103 is a little dark and sibilant. So it needs some kind of, like it, 
possibly lacking the presence boost if you look at frequency charts from these mics. That's why when you look at the Rode NT1A, it goes, it goes way up in the high end, so you don't want that. Uh, and also the 103 costs 1300 bucks and the 102 costs 700 so we could all go out for lobster that's the real that's the real answer fly j michael in and uh, all have lobster oh there you go uh yeah. maurice scott again i need a mic for traveling is there a huge difference from the sound quality in the tlm 102 103 and the 416 you just kind of mentioned some things uh, different in the O2 and the O3. How about the 416? And why well, might that be a good choice for traveling? I think we kind of covered it, but again. We did, but we'll we'll rehash it. So the 102, first of all, is smaller for travel, so that's a good thing. I know Mark Scott travels with his 416, so he has two. He has one for travel, and he has one for in the studio, so he can his sound quality theoretically could be the same because he has the same mic. He puts his in a tube, uh, and you, when TSA uh, says, what's this? You just can't say the word shotgun, Mike. Because <laughs> they don't that's like that. It's a shotgun, Mike, yeah. But uh, I, would, I don't think I would travel with now, a Now, that's interesting. In a tube, what kind of tube? How big a tube? He, I think we produced the video, or he produced the video of the, his travel tube thing. And, so and we'll have to reach out. Mark Scott, the oh, king of yeah. king of mark king of marketing, Vopreneur. Give him a shout out. Yeah, he, if you I'll get him yeah, on, if you need, yeah, yeah, no, he would be great on your show. Um, so he travels with his four sixteen. The other positive thing about four sixteen for travel, Mike, is if you're in the hotel and or wherever, it's more direct, more directional, and uh, more forgiving about outside sounds coming into the microphone. Okay, so, okay. So there. So there. Uh, let's see, uh, Martin Booth, uh, the Senko 2, I had mentioned that this little microphone that I'm talking into right now, or it's, I'm not talking into it, it's pointed at me. Uh, it's finding you. It's finding me, yeah, the Senko D2, I have one as well, works pretty well. Uh, I looked at the specs and listened to it, and it got very high ratings. Um, I don't think any of the uh, shotguns are as good for the money as the 416. Uh, there are some other brands out there that are much more expensive and maybe there's something a little more wonderful about them, but the 416 has been a workhorse in this business for decade after decade after decade after decade. Yeah. Some people just can't afford $1,000 or sometimes it goes on sale uh, Christmas time with with the uh, code Santa Joe, as in Cipriano, oh, yeah. uh, sometimes at broadcast supply warehouse. So you could, I'm sure you can find a used 416, you know, 700. I, I bought one not too long ago for 500. Uh, at, Great. At, just because I collect them. Uh, <laughs> uh, microphones, I mean, not just 416s. Um, and I don't just just like having it. Uh, by the way, Theo, no extension. I got a short one specifically for that reason. So um, send send email me the sample of the crackling and all that business, and we'll talk. Okay. And we'll give out anybody listening, all thirty of you, if you haven't sent me a raw file, uh, just record ten seconds of room tone followed by a thirty second read. Please don't send me. Hi, Uncle Roy, this is me talking in my microphone, because that doesn't tell me what you sound like when you're reading. Uh, and email me at my shameful AOL email address, antland, A-N-T-L-A-N-D, prods, P-R-O-D-S, at AOL.com. If you don't like AOL, then antlandproductions at gmail.com. Either Ant way, I'll Land get Productions, A-N-T-L-A-N-D, uh, yep. productions, at, yep, at gmail. gmail. Uh, yeah. Gary Scales again. My headphones are low when I'm using Source Connect. I have Universal Audio Twin interface. How do I turn the volume up in my headphones? Talk louder. I, I, you <laughs> no, know no, what? That's, uh, no, that's the wrong. That's the wrong answer. Just kidding. I, I have a suggestion too. Get a get a, a headphone amplifier. Headphone amp. Yeah, you can get a head of headphone amp. They're they're yeah. not expensive, and it allows you to control your headphones uh, much better. 
I have a battery powered headphone amp that's about this big. It takes three AA batteries. Bought it at Radio Shack, so that gives the age away. There yeah, no we know how, old, how long it can and be it, that door good thing. Yeah, it's when the wire recorder was just invented. Um, <laughs> but that that really made it, and then it had a volume control on there, so uh, it wasn't overly loud. Yeah, get a headphone amp. And again, why don't these interface companies, I'm looking at my Steinberg over here, why don't they give us more oomph? Uh, on the input side and on the headphone amp, all that, of them. That's they, a good question. I, I think it's probably saving money or who knows. Or, um, or what fits in the box. Scott! Scott! Scott Chambers. <laughs> I met Scott Chambers at, I mean, years ago at a convention. And I remember Scott's the thing he said there. to me. I am tired of doing hard sell car commercials. I want to do something else. And uh, he's Did doing coach something him? else. Uh, Did question coach for him? Uncle, what's that? Did you coach him? You know what? We just had a conversation. I don't think uh, I've ever coached him. Just talked. Uh, question Scott for... is gonna. Scott is gonna. I know. I'll get to the answer to the question in a minute. But Scott's gonna be at Bo Atlanta. He's gonna be interviewing people on camera and stuff. He's he's. I love Scott. I love Scott. Oh, he's a great and, guy. Oh, Part of the answer to the question, I have oh, my yes. crab. <laughs> I have some, it's crab sock Wednesday. Well, put it uh, up again. I, I got I got his uh, comment out of the way. You know, there you go. Okay. There. It's crab sock Ooh, Wednesday. A little smelly there. A little smelly. Smell a vision. No, yeah, I, I, I won't. That's no, high there, tech. There. Uh, yeah. Cr uh, Chris Anthony, how you doing? Hi, you Uncle Roy. My hubby's yeah. trying to get a recording booth for my daughter up in the mountains, uh, Tonga Mountains. If he had a few questions for you, how would he reach you? Uh, he's standing on a tall bridge ready to jump. She has windows and, <laughs> and sonnet walls, so he's trying to set up it in a closet for her. Is there a way right. to reach you? Big hug, yep. Chris. Chris, of course, right. the voice of Barbie for years. Wow. Okay, so to address your Windows issue, of course, I think uh, you went in a walk-in closet to address that problem, but there's a product called Indo. It's like the word window without the W. Indo windows. They're window inserts that cut down outside noise coming through your window pane. Uh, so that's one. Um, and, and just treat as, you know, if you have hard walls in the basement or wherever it is, you've got, you got to put, uh, you have to get panels made or at least put Auralex and then cover that with packing blankets inside my whisper room. Uh, I've got Auralex all around and then I've got packing blankets on top of that uh, to cut down the... Uh, you know something I found also to be a good sound absorber are thick theater curtains. Yes. Uh, uh, and if you have them with all the folds, uh, they're just taken, and, and maybe you have a wall that you have some art or something on it, and you can just open it up when you need to, or a window, you can open it up when you need to, and then close it down when you need to absorb right. that sound. Yeah, we, you need you need carpeting. We don't want you know we don't want a hard surface on the floor. Somebody said I said put an area rug, and she said, uh, "Well, what kind?" I said, "A pretty one." <laughs> a pretty one yourself, that's pretty that's pretty thick. <laughs> that's pretty thick. The thicker the better. Um, yeah, you know, again, we can put my uh, email address up there, antlandproductions at gmail dot com, or just find me on Facebook, you know, I'm all over the place, or LinkedIn, just write to me, send me a sample, here's my crappy sound, what can I do to fix it, and I'll be happy to advise you. Free at free home studio evaluations Hold on, since the I'm, pandemic. I'm trying to get something together for you here. Get something together. And uh, there it is, Antland Productions yep. at gmail.com. Okay. That means I got to check my Gmail more frequently. Yeah, because you're, you're going to get some. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, let's Good. see. I'm going to turn that off for a second. I'll put it back up in a minute. Mm -hmm. Micah B-Size, speaking of odd angles and ceilings, new recording space. Should I treat my ceiling 
If it slopes at around 30 degrees, all of the surfaces are treated with sound blankets and foam. I haven't gotten any complaints so far. Send me your sample. I'll complain. Or or, may, or not. If it's not broken, there's like when people, when people send me a sample, if it sounds good, I'll tell you that. If I have no advice, then you have my blessing. I'm on the uh, technical advisor board of, of WOVO, the World uh, Voiceover Organization, and you know, people send in their sample, and then we tell them, oh, it's too, it's too live, it's too roomy. So I don't know, I won't know without hearing it. So send me a sample, and I'll see. I mean, if I don't know, you would think if there's, uh, whether it's on an angle or not, you would think if there's a hard surface, there's the potential for, also your 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 desk is a hard surface, so you have to cover it with uh, at least a towel, if not a blanket, that would be good. And sometimes your monitors, you may have to angle your microphone so that your voice doesn't bounce off your monitor and go back into your microphone. EGAD. Could be, could be tricky. Michael Sessoms, like the hat, Michael. Uh, will a good quality 20-foot XLR mic cord uh, get interference too? Not you know, we, don't, we, don't, we don't talk about cords very much. No. Um, if you go with it, you know, if you go with the Megami or Monster, if you go with a reputable, you know, don't just go to Amazon and spend $10 on an XLR cable. And also try not to have your mic cable run parallel or cross any power because that will cause hum and interference. Uh, no, twenty foot cable should you should be fine if it's if it's properly grounded and uh, and those crossing you know. cables that's the kind of hum that drives you nuts because so often you just have no idea that that's what it is that it's something that simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So try not to just try to separate, and it's tricky because on your booth you may have a pass through. And everything's going through there, the power and your headphones and every you know, interface and everything. So try to keep it separate, separate pass-through for power That's interesting. versus uh, I, I've got two pass-throughs just for that reason. Because yeah. you're so smart. <laughs> well. That... I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Oh, got oh. something from Donna Flato. Uh, Plato. Plato. I, Plato. 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 Like Plato. Uh, I guess no different so long as you have an equal number of colorful, preferably tie-dye T-shirts hanging in rainbow order, but Roy knows best. And you know what? I uh, I hadn't pre-read that one. Um, but yeah, yeah. Colorful socks, well, yeah, colorful shirts. Donna is my girlfriend of almost three years, uh, so she's just been a little, a little bit of a, 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 of a wise girl. But when I went to VO North, and I came home, and she said, did you look in your closet? She put all my T-shirts in rainbow order. That's what she's talking about. Aww. So all the white ones are on the left, and then they go to yellow and blue and green, and, and then there's the whole tie-dye section, you know. Wow, she's a keeper. She is a keeper. That's uh, right. Steven, it's Thursday. Are there bagels to be had? Actually, Steven, it... <laughs> It's it's Bagel Thursday Eve. It's Wednesday. You uh, turned your page too soon, but I was ready. Uh, you know, it's, it's ba- interesting, Roy. The first time I met you, you had bagels <laughs> for everybody. Uh, and at that point, I I just knew people knew uh, uh, Roy, Uncle Roy. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't really know who you were at that time. This was this is years ago. And uh, you you were handing out bagels. Like, who is this guy handing out these bagels? <laughs> it took Gerald. It took Gerald a couple of years to figure me out with that. Like, what the, what's all this bagel stuff? My carry on luggage going to Vo Atlanta or any conference is four dozen bagels in the carry on luggage. And so. uh, that was a great transition. Let's talk about Vo Atlanta. <laughs> and since what? 2015, uh, you've been the technical yeah. advisor running the board, and uh, and you've been doing it for some other conventions, too. How did you get roped into that, and, and are you going to be able to retire on the money? <laughs> some of them don't pay, so <laughs> um, I'm like, I'm happy to get 
my airfare and hotel comp sometimes. Uh, I AJ AJ McKay was originally in that position, and when he needed to take a break, and I'm just an old audio mixer guy, so I said, "Hey, I can take over." So I sat, and then um, and then. He, at some point, I think he didn't want to do it anymore, and I stepped in. And AJ has said to me, I'm so glad that you took over, because that's not really what I want to do. Like, he's a great DJ for karaoke, and he's a great voiceover, and he produces great imaging demos, and he produces demos for J. Michael, um, and he's a great guy. But he didn't want to sit there. I like to sit there. I'm, I'm glued to that chair for four days. And we always know yeah. we, where we can find you. That's right. And whoever gets there first gets the know. bagel. But but, but I am I am presenting um, a pre-conference X session on. Uh, I've taken my two-hour uh, life-changing Adobe Audition setup and training. We're doing it in a group, so it's three hours. And those people get the first dibs on the bagels. So sign up now. Sign up now. <laughs> and sign up for the expectation. Once again, if you are, oops, that's not the right thing. That's the right thing. Oh, bye, Stephen. Uh, if you. you want to get in touch with Uncle Roy, Antland Productions at Gmail. I will just leave that up there. And what are you doing with Thank that you. bagel? Um, I'm eating it. And another comment here. Whoops. Well, I'll just move this stuff around here. <laughs> uh, Randy Moore, you're killing me with the bagels. Two words, Texas. Okay. Got to come to Jersey. Got to okay. come to Jersey. I'll have the bagels. Now, uh, and let me talk a little bit. We've just got a few minutes left here uh, about okay. your demo production. What kinds of demos do you produce? I like to partner, as you and I may be doing in the near future, I like to partner with another coach who has gotten the talent demo ready. And then we co-direct and then I produce. I've been producing demos since the 1980s. Okay, what, so what kind, think, there's so many categories, so many genres of voiceover now. What genres do you tackle? As far as producing, I can produce any genre. Um, but I, I'm not the guy to get you demo ready in certain genres. I'm not going to get you ready for gaming, although I produced, I directed and produced plenty of gaming demos. Um, commercial, uh, you know, I, I write scripts, e-learning, uh, really anything. Promo, I've done it, and, and Tom Pinto and I partner in uh, in, in show narration demo. You, you got some of my 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 very dear friends doing stuff with you. No, Tom Tom Pinto, especially for narration, is just brilliant. Just he's brilliant. great. I also produce uh, all of Julie Williams' demos, but huh. she likes to she likes to direct by herself unless somebody has come to my booth in New Jersey and then they kind of get two directors because you can't shut me up. Um, no, I'm a different set of ears, you know, like when you direct Randy or whoever we work with, um, you're going to direct and I'm going to base my comments on how I'm hearing it. You know, it's just another set of ears. Um, and, and so often that's exactly what you need when we had booth directors, when you went to your agent. Uh, if you put together a, a voiceover workout group that you're uh, uh, reading copy for each other and critiquing one another, what you're really looking for is a good set of ears that can hear what you're doing and understand what's working and what's not and help you find a way to make whatever's not working work. Am I allowed to share screen, or do you need to give me permission for that? Uh, well, this allowed. this isn't. Uh, uh, I, okay. I can't share screen. I got it. If, oh, okay. if I had no, the I... ability to do that, I certainly would for you. Oh, um, okay. No, that's what, cool. what did you no, I was going to put. No, I was going to put up my VO Atlanta thing that you put yours up before. Oh. So I just wanted to show every. It's fine. It's fine. You don't have to, or you unless know? you go to that page. That if you go to that page that has everybody's. Uh, thing on it, then you can click on mine Wait a and, minute. Wait a and minute. share it. 
Gerald Let's sent see. us what that the, 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 the link to every everybody's uh, X session or uh, anybody who's a presenter. Yeah, Yokelson, it's all the way at the bottom. Okay. And... <laughs> Alphabetically. All right. There. There we go. View Atlanta. I'll right. be there on the 30th uh, setting up. And there we go. Very good, Dave. Dave, you're good with technology. That's great. I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, make it fit. Doing... There we go. Make it fit. There. Look at that. Somebody screen. Here, wait. let me screen capture that, you know, so we can. <laughs> All right, I got that. I screen captured a couple of things because that's good. Um, all right, what else? Well, well, fantastic. <laughs> I'll just leave that up there for a little bit uh, and see if we have I'm any more. Be Atlanta. Uh, I think. Well, we have hit uh, seven o'clock. This hour went by amazingly fast, uh, and we're having fun. We're having fun, and if we can't have, if we can't sharing have fun, so we, much we, good we, information. Sharing so much good, good information. Uh, but once again, uh, gets me to get a plug in too. Uh, we both will be at VO Atlanta uh, coming up at the end of the month, the 31st through the 4th. Um, mm -hmm. And and I keep plugging it, not because it's going to put more money in my pocket, uh, but I keep plugging it because it's such a good experience for people in voiceover. Uh, I remember the first conferences I went to, I was kind of skeptical myself. Uh, but you will meet people that you want to meet. Uh, you will meet people who will become your voiceover family, people who you can talk to about voiceover when you can't talk to uh, the one you love or mom or dad or sister or brother because they don't know what you're going through. Come have lunch with us. Sit down with us. Just just talk to us. We we're interested in who you are. You know who we are now, right? So come sit with us. Uh, you know we can have bre early breakfast, seven o'clock. <laughs> Don't try to have <laughs> breakfast with me at seven o'clock. Oh uh, no, you'll, you'll, you'll I won't be up that early. No, be, no, because you're you're on uh, you're on Pacific time. Well, that's right. Gee whiz. Uh, and I and I have to set up. That's uh, why I'm up so oh, early. Oh, there you go. So, there you um, go. No, the, the the first VO Atlanta that that was the thing was just come over and talk to me. I I want to learn about. It. I want to meet you. I want to help you. You know, we're just we're just two nice guys here. There you That's go. All. And I've yeah. I've got your Antland Productions uh, Gmail up again. Uh, I'm gonna say goodbye, Uncle Roy. I look oh, forward goodbye, to Dave. I look forward to seeing you in just over a week. <laughs> goodbye, Dave. Oh, Mr. Bale, oh no, oh no. Oh, oh no, oh no. I have a four octave range. Uh, Uncle Roy, everybody. Uh, the one and the only uh, colorful socks, T-shirts, and bagels. Uh, thank you, Uncle Roy, once again. And by the way, uh, this Ask Dave Fenoy Anything uh, lives on my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy Voiceover Training. If you're looking for coaching, you can visit uh, DaveFenoy.com, click on the Study VO tab, and uh, book yourself. And once again, next week, there will be no Ask Dave Fenoy anything on uh, that Wednesday, uh, because I'll be traveling to Atlanta to hang out with uh, the voiceover with family. Yeah, with you and the voiceover family. So, uh, going to call it a night. Uh, thank you again, Roy, and for all of you out there, uh, book something. <laughs>